We've moved again. NASA now allowing us on the floor of what's called the White Flight Control Room. This will serve as mission control for future space flights. America's return to the moon and then Mars will be orchestrated from this very room. Our Christine Noel has a look ahead to the future of space flight. I am inside Building 9 in the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, and this is a mock-up of the Orion Space Capsule. It is built to take humans farther than they've ever been before. Three, two, one, ignition. NASA is getting back in the manned spaceflight game. A return to the moon on the Orion will fall under the Artemis program. A fitting name. In Greek mythology, Artemis was the twin sister of Apollo. A lot has to happen first, but NASA's goal is to send Americans back to the moon by 2024. I wish Daddy was here to see that. He never wanted to be known as the last man on the moon. I really hope Artemis is successful and we land on the moon. We have to go back to the moon. Um, I think it's really important that this generation, my generation, and, and the generation after understand what's required. There's so many things we still need to learn. There's so many things that we can do on the moon. The next generation of spaceflight is game for it. Astronaut Jessica Meir heads to the ISS in September, but the moon is on her bucket list. I find it hard to believe that there's anyone in our office right now that would turn down a trip to the moon. I know for me that would really be the ultimate. Many of the space pioneers we talk to say when we return to the moon, this time we should stay a while. I think the first thing we need to do is figure out how to live on the moon and then we'll know how to live on a, another planet somewhere else. So I, mean, I think that I think you learn a lot like that, just, just like we learn how to get into space with Mercury then Gemini, and then Apollo. Well, we need to learn how to live somewhere else and then figure out how to get to Mars. The purpose of the space program is to find another place to live. Someday we can't live here. The sun's gonna burn up someday. So we're gonna have to go somewhere else. The moon may be next, but NASA also has its sights on deep space. And so does Apollo 11 astronaut Michael Collins. Where do you think we ought to go next? Mars. Mars, no question. I like that. Yes. Wait, can you get it? I put on a T-shirt? I like that. Yes. And it's not just countries running this 21st century space race. Companies are too. SpaceX and Boeing both playing a big role in NASA's short-term space goals, including sending astronauts to the International Space Station with U.S. launches. Wait for it within a year. We would now start flying eventually, very soon, out of Florida. We're going to have uh, vehicles that are going to be built, what we call the Commercial Crew Program. They've been competing to build the, those vehicles. I hope NASA continues to lead the way and brings along all the international partners and the companies that need to help them be successful. Meanwhile, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic are running a race of their own. And the winner could be you. They're working to give space tourists the suborbital trip of a lifetime. Both companies hoping to begin their commercial expeditions within a year's time. It's an exciting time, and I didn't know if I would see it in my career time. We're getting close. How cool is that? Wherever we go next, back to the moon, Mars, or even beyond, it was the space pioneers of the past who laid the groundwork. The trailblazers of Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. And that is why this anniversary, 50 years since the moon landing, is so important to celebrate. We are Space City, and we are all part of this incredible moment in space history. Thank you for joining us for this tribute to Houston's mission to the moon. Good night. We've celebrated this every year since the time we first landed in the moon, but it doesn't seem that it's the 50th year. Pride. Um, at the moment that they put the touchdown, got off, got out, and put the flag up, all those were moments of pride. The final descent to the lunar surface was, uh, for me, the, the highlight of flight. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I think there are very few people who really understand how dangerous it was and Neil had to do it manually. Absolutely amazing. He was the right guy. Strange reaction, like I've never seen that thing before in my life. And then I suddenly realized, no, oh, wait a minute, I once was up there. Looked up and saw that crescent moon hanging in a crescent. It was like, this is not a simulation. This is, we're really there. 
the voyage of Apollo still seem incredible. It is something special. I mean, there's only been 12 people that's been there.